Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. In today's episode, we are starting our build series for our 24 Hours of Lemons car. We are gonna be building a brand new car this season to go race against Chris Fix. And the car we are starting with is none other than my very, very flooded Bentley Continental GT Super Sports. That's right, we're starting with a $114,000 car to enter a $500 race, and we're gonna do it without actually breaking any rules. I'll explain how, and I'll also build a race car in today's episode, stay tuned! So if you guys missed the episode where we took delivery of this bad boy, this was flooded all the way to the roof in the last round of Florida hurricanes. And we bought it to use the powertrain. We tried to jumpstart it and found out that there was a lot of electrical issues and kind of decided that we most likely need a new electrical system for the vehicle. But the engine and trans is in good shape. So we bought this thing to use the powertrain. So. How are we gonna race it in a $500 racing series? You might be wondering. All right, so I said we're not gonna cheat, and we're not, kinda. And I said we're gonna race that Bentley and Lemons, kinda. So 24 Hours of Lemons is a racing organization that does endurance racing in a really fun way. Game. The name of the game is to not take anything too seriously and go out there and have fun. Uh, but they do want you to bring $500 cars, or sometimes, they develop what they call loopholes. And I think the best way I could explain loopholes really quickly is uh, the Lemons guys got bored of seeing the same five different cars raced all the time, so they started giving out budget exemptions for really unique things. And after they partnered up with eBay Motors, they started finding a lot of unique things on eBay Motors and started handing out a lot more what they call loopholes. They're not handing them out. They create the loopholes, they post them online, and they hope somebody will take advantage of them. And this year, we will be taking advantage of one. Last year, Chris Fix's car was much faster than ours. This year, well, we're gonna bring a car that's much faster than his. And we're gonna use a Lemons loophole. It's this one right here. This find of the week comes with complete budgetary immunity. So that means the $500 budget is not going to apply to our build. Consider bringing any Chrysler product with a Bentley body kit on it. This is a loophole that we'd love to have exploited over and over. So, I happen to know the guys that run Lemons really love Bentleys for some reason. So do I. And now I thought, you know what? I don't want to cut the whole body off of my Bentley Super Sport because I have a build in mind for this once we use the powertrain. I have a build idea and I really want to do it. But then it, it dawned on me, we can borrow the body panels off of this Bentley, build a Bentley endurance race car, and then we can bring what's left over back. This car has some very specific damage that isn't going to be a big deal to borrow some body parts. Let me show you. Let's look at the body parts that can be unbolted from this car. Fender, that's in good shape. Headlights, toast. Front bumper, toast. Hood, perfectly good shape. Let's not damage that in the race. Bumper already said toast, this fender, toast. That's what can be unbolted from the front. Coming to the back, rear bumper, toasty toast. Tail lights, full salt water, we'll fix those and hopefully um, they won't get hurt in the race. Trunk lid, yeah, we went gorilla style on that and cut it twice. So that's toast. So most of the parts that bolt off of this car are already damaged and they were needing to be replaced. So we're gonna risk a few good parts, hoping we won't damage them in the race. We're gonna unbolt these parts. We're gonna borrow them from the Bentley with the plan on bringing them back to the Bentley. We're gonna do no permanent damage to the Bentley so we can rebuild the Bentley later on for a really fun project. Anyways, the first step of our build process is gonna be to harvest our Bentley parts and then go get them on our Chrysler. Let's get the hood off. Got the hood off, displaying proudly our saltwater disaster. I really do want to get this thing back up and running. Water didn't make it into the engines. I really want to give it a shot. Uh, we're going to go after the bumper next. That may include taking a little bit of fender action off, but mainly just trying to get this busted bumper off in uh, as few pieces as possible. I'd like to call it one piece, technically. It's still connected there. We got the bumper off, it broke a few more times. It's very, very brittle. I don't know if that's from being in Florida sunlight its whole life or if it's just the way that it's manufactured. It's made by some company named ARRK. I think they made it for Bentley though. I don't think this is aftermarket. 
because uh, it looks like the super sports bumper so i guess we got two headlight bezels over there but it looks like the other ones are broken off over here so i don't know if we'll run those in the long run uh, but moving on to the fenders let's go ahead and get the fenders off Oh boy, this fender was a bit of a nightmare. We had to uh, had to get the wheel off. Once we got the wheel off, we had to take the wheel liner off. Once we got the wheel liner off, there was this uh, water washer fluid tank that had filled up with salt water and sludge and smelled like death. It smells terrible still. Yeah, it still smells bad around here, but we got all that off, uh, fenders off. We're gonna work on the next side where we have a stuck nut. This guy right here is free spinning, but we're gonna try and keep this rolling. If we get the fenders off, that means we're done with the front, and then we can get onto the back before night. Fender number two is off and in the pile we're getting quite a pile here fender fender bumper and headlight i kind of didn't want to show that because so there's like a bolting point here bolting point here bolting point here and then there's a bolting point back here and all the access is blocked by this guy so i got mad and i just ripped the headlight off and broke all the tabs out they're garbage headlights anyways but uh this one seems to be better so i won't do that i hope Got that second headlight out. I think I only broke one more tab than whatever the wreck broke. Yeah, so we're doing good. So moving on down the car, we're not gonna borrow the doors. That's impossible. We may make a mold of these quarter panels and reproduce them if we need to. But now we're back into the old trunky trunk. Triple stars. Triple stars. We may not be able to get the trunk off right now. Well, it's getting dark and we don't have the right tools. We're doomed. We'll come back tomorrow. All right, we're back. We got the right tools. Let's go ahead and get the trunk lid off. So hot, the camera's overheated. Front impact bar, we got that. Front bumper bar, we got that. Some fender clips, we got that. Rear bumper, we got this baby. Um, by the way, FDRX7 not for sale. Porsche, parts car, parts only. Thieves broke the window, cut some coolant lines by the engine, and then now the ignition doesn't work. Uh, this is for sale for parts. If anybody wants it, email me, Chris Abuse for build. It's cheap. And of course, we got the trunk lid off. Let's get the goods and get back to the shop. It's a weird camera angle, but you're going to understand why in a second. So we're back at the shop. We've got all the Bentley parts here, and it's time to unveil our Chrysler that we're putting our body kit on. It's our race car for this season, guys. Now, could have went out and bought a Chrysler, but that would cost money. Instead, I just went in my backyard and grabbed an abandoned BMW. You got it. Here we go. It's got the moss and everything. Now, you guys may remember this BMW uh, during uh, the, the, the apocalypse. We built this for Kyle and turbo started smoking a little bit. He didn't feel like driving it. Ended up in my backyard for the last few years. Abandoned BMW. Now, probably in this episode, we'll get to our loopholing the loophole how we're going to make this all 100 percent legitimate but for right now we want to get to work we're going to go ahead and clean this thing up make it unabandoned looking we're going to start stripping out the interior make it more race car looking now we have to strip out the interior for safety um and uh and stuff we are on a tight tight deadline we have 10 days to turn this thing into a full built bentley race car so yeah a little less storytelling a little more talking wait those are the same thing we're working
First hour of stripping went better than most people. What am I saying? Uh, we got the seats out. We've got the door cards out. Now, um, regulations say that if we want to have our window rolled down rather than taking the window out or breaking it like Kyle did last year, we would uh, we have to cover this area or put the door card back in. So that's something to think about. Seats are out. Racing seat goes back in. Fire suppression goes right here. With this car, we're not going to go too crazy with the weight reduction. We have a very, very good power to weight ratio on this car, similar to the Bentley Continental GT Super Sport. Uh, so we're just going to take out carpeting and things that are going to get in the way and maybe catch on fire while welding. Other than that, we're going to try and leave some amenities like the subs and so we can have a, a decent, half decent sound system to maybe jam to if we want to while we're uh, cruising on the track. It was something that I felt we were missing in last year's race car. But before we continue, I want to do one cool thing with our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Carly. It's a vehicle diagnostics tool, and in my opinion, it is the best one out there. So we're gonna be using it on the 2008 BMW 335i project car. We'll go ahead and get it plugged into our OBD2 port and fire up the app. On this car, it's right by your left foot, but uh, it's normally, you know, screwed in. So we'll turn the car to on, uh, and then fire up the app. We'll go ahead and hit connect, and we'll connect up with the vehicle with the OBD2 scanner we just plugged in and we're connected. It's been a long while since we've even used this car, so first thing I wanna do is run a diagnostics and see how it is compared to the last time that we ran it. This is a really, really thorough diagnostic. It's gonna look through history. It's gonna look at current faults, all sorts of stuff. This car has uh, been slightly modified and we push a lot of extra boost through it. So once in a while we get misfires and those are good to know. Wow, we might set a record for issues found. 62 phone codes found. Let's see what our results are. When we jump into the engine, there's the misfires that I was talking about. It's kind of expected. So what I like to do here is clear the issues and then see, and then I do another scan and see how it looks when they come back. All right, so that's a lot less errors and we can go see which ones are still there. Airbag we know about because we took that off. Tail lights we know about, but we still have one with the DSC and that's brake pad wear. So that's okay because we uh, changed the brake pads. We've been racing on this car and it doesn't have the brake pad wear signal. But that's really good because this means that our traction control is going to work. And this app is not just diagnostics. There is a lot more that it can do. Let's check out the coding and unlocking hidden features. So there's a ton of stuff here that we can customize. Things, everything from windshield wipers, lights and mirrors, to dashboard functionality, and even iDrive stuff. Oh, like this is a great thing to turn off the legal disclaimer. I don't want to see this anymore. Let's turn it off. And just like that, it's done. I've been using Carly personally for years now, ever since they sponsored the first episode. I keep it in my camera bag. I bring it everywhere I go. It's that good. So guys, check it out. The link is at the top of the description. Huge thanks to Carly for sponsoring this episode. Go check out that link. Pick yourself up one today. Let's get back to work. All right, jumping back into stripping. Now that we've got the interior completely gutted out, it's time to start making uh, uh, spreader plates that spread impact for our roll cage. Spreader plates, everything's got an innuendo in this one. So now I'm gonna move on to a part that I think a lot of you BMW lovers are gonna absolutely hate, taking off the front end of this vehicle. Just like how we're just borrowing the Bentley parts, we're just gonna temporarily remove the whole front of this car and install Bentley parts. We're not gonna damage anything. We're gonna be able to put it back if we want to later. I also haven't ever told you guys this, but I own another one of these, so there's potential to put it on there too. I gotta get the whole front end of this thing off so we can get the Bentley front end of this thing to the, to the, the on. Well, say sayonara to that front end. 
It is, well, it is only temporarily taken off. There it is, comes off in one piece. Kind of cool idea we had, we could take a mold of that. Let me keep that idea in my back pocket. I could take a huge mold of that and then just pop out new front ends for like my drift car if I wanted to. Only problem is it, it makes the car really, really wide for a drift car and I don't know a wide angle kit that makes the car that wide. Maybe wise fab, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, you may also be wondering what the heck is going on here. And this is fire safety. We got Oscar in there. He's welding the spreader plates for the roll cage. And uh, last year we caught the car on fire, our lemons race car, and we almost burnt the whole shop to the ground. So we've got Oscar welding up top, Zane watching down at the bottom, and then me on evacuation duty as the Tesla driver. So if all goes wrong, I either open the door if there's time or if there's not, I drive right through it. And I pull the BMW with me out of the shop so we don't burn it down. It's a new day and we've made a mistake. So you saw Oscar in here welding the hell out of all of these spreader plates, super cool. We started looking at our boxes and where we wanted to put our A-pillars. So these boxes lead up, run the A-pillar and come back. Well, they tie into the halo bar that's up here. Um, we thought we were gonna get away with having these boxes here, but in relation to where your legs are and everything and where you're sitting, I don't think that that's a good idea to put those boxes there. So we gotta move the boxes forward more um, to have our upright bar, but that means that the dash is gonna get in the way. So. We're really sorry to the BMW lovers out there, but we have to cut this dash. We're gonna trim as little as we have to off of this. We'll make a nice clean cut. We'll even save, we saved the end cap, so hopefully we can like dress it up and put the end cap back on there. But yeah, we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to slice away, move the box forward, and then we'll get our uprights. Goal for today, you think we can get the halo bar and those upright bars tacked in today? It's gonna be a push, I think so. All right, my goal will be to get the front bumper front hood and front fenders, at least mocked up with some bracketry. Let's get to it. All right, lots of work has been done, but uh, no big shocker, we, we missed our made up deadline of uh, one day. I missed it by a mile. Oscar's got a ton of the cage work all bent up and ready to be welded in. So once we get to this position right here where we don't have the uh, the A-pillars in yet, but we got the the rear hoop and the halo bar in, it's kind of a, a dance of uh, welding these things at the top and then leaning it all forward so you can weld the tops of them. And then before we welded our boxes for our A-pillars, we slide it back and then lean it back so we can weld the A-pillars in. It's a, it's a little dance that you'll see, but that's so you can get full circumference welds all the way around your cage. Um, and then you weld it in at the base at the, at the very end. So Oscar's getting ready to start busting that out. I have got the hood mounted. It's going up and down. It's on hinges, but it doesn't have the, uh, the front hood mounts done. And then I'm getting the first of the fenders mounted on as well. Looks a little dorky right now because it's not in the right place, but it's getting there.
All right, guys, it is a few days later and we are, to say we're behind schedule is, well, we had to, we, uh, we luckily moved the schedule. The shipper was supposed to pick up on Friday. They are now picking up on a Monday. So it's once again possible to finish in time, but it's still gonna be extremely hard. But here's where we're at. So we've got the front end on. Uh, fenders have mounts, they're hard mounted on there. The hood hinges, it now has the closing latches. So it latches and has a hood pop. So that's all good. We're working on getting the front crash bar installed just in case of that. And Oscar has wrapped up the roll cage, the main meat of the roll cage. The only one thing we got to do now is add our harness bar that goes right there. But this is a very, very well-built cage. And Oscar, as usual, did a great job. Looks super awesome, and we uh, got the requirements. Jared from, he changed his YouTube channel's name. It's now Questionable Garage, was Wrencher Every Day, is racing with us, and so we, uh, yeah, he's a big boy. Uh, so we need a wide seat. He's like six foot seven, uh, long legs, and so we have, a, we have the biggest seat from Corbo, and uh, we had to make the most seat room so you can see those door bars go right up into the door, um, and we got a great cage in here, which I'm really, really happy about. Oh yeah, he's also, because he's super tall, so we build these roof standoffs so they, we get as much roof uh, room as possible too. So we thought tomorrow was our last day, but we got two more days. And then it goes on a truck, gets shipped over to New Jersey. Uh, we will meet it there at Chris Fix's place. And then we go with Chris Fix to the racetrack while we will race him and his team at the 24 Hours of Lemons. New Jersey Motorsports Park, June 10th or 11th that weekend if you guys want to come by want to come watch see how we do now i told you how we will make this bmw a chrysler or we'll at least fit in with the rules i'm going to show you that in the next episode once we get a little bit further we've been really just trying to cram as you can probably see and get as much of the stuff done as we can so we don't have to finish it in new jersey that would be nice we're going to actually try and test this time on friday before the race rather than just have a completely untested car show up to the racetrack so make sure you tune in for next episode it's going to be quite a transformation and it will look much more bentley-esque see you guys then peace come, come, come on.